Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning friends, in the last lecture you have seen we have been mostly talking about nomenclature of aerofoil, NACA aerofoil. Nowadays there are many customized aerofoils which are most of the time trade secret for different different manufacturing company, design and manufacturing companies. But as a designer, let us come out of that nomenclature and related things. What is more important for a designer to understand an aerofoil in a simplistic manner so that it helps him not only in selecting an aerofoil but also making this aerofoil part of a wing. Finally, whatever aerofoil you are using or selecting that has to become part of a wing. So let us go a little more deep as a designer perspective is concerned and see what could be a designer's perspective vis-a-vis -vis those aerofoils or database, etc. available. First, let us not forget we are talking about CL, CD, and then some part CM. These are all aerofoil characteristics. And you know from our first course, the CL will be function of Reynolds number, alpha, Mac number, I'll focus more on Reynolds number as a designer, because if I have to design an airplane, I need to know what is the design altitude and what is the design cruise speed. Why that is important? Because I know the CL, CD, they vary with Reynolds number. I know it is ratio of inertia force by viscous force and you can write it like rho ul by mu. So as I am going higher and higher altitude, because rho is changing, even if I keep u same, if, even if I assume viscosity remains same, which is not really a true assumption, but density decreases very fast. And therefore, the Reynolds number changes, so your CL, CD is also expected to change. So when we were talking about aerofoil, I was mentioning that there is a database, NACA aerofoil, and if you Google for NACA aerofoil 6 series or a 4 series, you will find CL versus CD plots are given in one of the assignments or in one of the tutorial, we will be presenting those. But each such values are mentioned pertaining to particular Reynolds number. Right? So when you are designing or selecting such aerofoil, make sure that the aerofoil which you are selecting is, is good enough for the Reynolds number, which is closer to your main design altitude and design cruise speed conditions. This I thought we must mention, because if there is a change in Reynolds number, Substantially, at a particular point, a particular cutoff point, the flow characteristic may change, all your CL estimates may change. For example, if you are uh, thinking of designing a laminar aerofoil uh, or a wing with a laminar aerofoil, if there is a dirt or some manufacturing defect on the wing surface, the flow may become turbulent. 
But in this case, please understand the Reynolds number, if you calculate by this, will remain same. But because of dirt or because of some imperfections, locally flow may become turbulent. Or, or, or think of a situation when it is passing through a rain. Most likely, the flow will become turbulent. So when I'm talking about Reynolds number, one is based on this. At the same time, you should also look for cutoff Reynolds number, which are, can be estimated based on surface finish. So all those examples we'll be doing. But in a nutshell, at this stage, you understand that, yes, I need to ask myself, what is the Reynolds number I'm going to fly for? And accordingly, I'll select the aerofoil from the database. This is very, very important. Loosely, you remember, around Reynolds number 10 to the power 5, around this, this transition of boundary layer happens. That is, from laminar to turbulent, this thing will happen. And most of the airplane, they fly, the wing will have 10 million value of Reynolds number. Right. It's a typical number, so it's almost like uh, in the turbulent zone, and not very far off from laminar, unless and until you design something which I, we call a laminar aerofoil. So you en ensure that the Reynolds number is satisfying the condition of Reynolds number to be laminar, to ensure laminar flow. All those details we'll be talking as we go explicitly in the design with case studies, right? One problem you face in this design course is we need a lot of database to be used. So my advice to all of you would be either you Google it or take book. Many design books are there. I, I am following Raymer at this point. If you are a really good designer or you want to become a good designer, you want to really enjoy this course, Get one book, Raymer's book on aircraft design. You will find one-to-one -one correspondence at least the initial part of it. Right? As soon as I'll be changing the textbook or any material, I'll be mentioning you, so that you can have a cross verification. And once you read, you learn more than you listen to a lecture. Right? When I was talking about laminar, you know, six series aerofoil were primarily motivated because of this laminar bucket, right. this is the laminar bucket. And the reason is that if you design the airplane for a particular CL, let's say this is the CL design, and whether you are here or here, there is no substantial increase in the CD of the aerofoil. So you are flying more efficiently. If I check with this sort of aerofoil, four series aerofoil, if I'm flying here at this CL, if you want to fly at this CL, this is CL and CD, you see immediately there is an increment in the drag. Right? So that may not be very appropriate way of optimizing aerodynamic efficiency. Right. So that is why this sort of a laminar bucket driven aerofoil, which is a six series onwards, that has become popular. But as I have been repeatedly telling you, laminar bu bucket, all this thing, very easier to uh, say or theoretically um, advocate. But from manufacturing point of view, from the maintenance point of view, one needs to be very, very careful. Right. You may ask, if I want to design an airplane, I need to have guess for some numbers. What CL should I design the airplane for? Typically, transport airplane, CL 0.3 to 0.5 is a good guess number. Right? So that will help in getting the initial aerofoil. The finer things you can do as the design evolves. At this stage, we are talking about conceptual design. Right? Again, if I see. What is finally is an aerofoil? We know that if a flat plate is moved with a speed v and if this angle is theta, this will produce 
resistance R, which one component is a lift, one component is a drive. Why not a wing is just made up of flat plate? Why do you want so many things, aerofoil and all? The primary reason for graduating from here to here is increased CL I want, I want drag or CD, not drag, CD to be low, or in turn, I want CL by CD to be higher. That is the primary objective, right? Let us see, suppose I have got a shape something like this. Symmetric. What happens? Alpha equal to zero, the flow is coming like this. Whatever thing happened here, same thing will happen here. All your theories, the flow accelerates, the pressure drops, same thing will happen here. So net lift, net CL is zero at alpha equal to zero. Very simple. But now, if I just remove this part, How the story changes? I've removed this part. So now I could see that as the flow goes this direction, the flow accelerates. This you know. As the area of the contour is decreasing, the speed will increase. As the speed increases, the pressure, the static pressure will fall. And naturally, there will be differential pressure in this direction, upward direction, which we call lift. So now, what is the difference between this and a symmetric aerofoil, which was full part of this? The difference is, in this case, at alpha equal to zero, still there will be lift. That is, at alpha equal to zero, lift is positive. But for symmetric, which is just mirror image of this, if I, here at alpha equal to zero, L is zero. And this is the beginning of what we call the cambered aerofoil. If I now see what type of aerofoil Wright brothers had, it was this and this. This is this is the right brother's aerofoil. Purely a cambered aerofoil. And if I want to understand this via this, what do, what do I do? In our language, we can draw mean camber line, and the mean camber line will be something like this. And this is what is what here in 1908, I suppose, Wright brothers, they used. It's a cambered aerofoil. So whatever cambered we are talking about, imagine without any CFD, without any high sophisticated tool, this is purely analytical understanding. And designer needs to encourage such thought process rather than getting lost into CFD, FEM, all those tools. If you want to be a good designer, basic level, you should try to understand. Finer things could be done offline, but thought process, you have to look for the basic building blocks on which you can build your aircraft. So I'm just giving you an example because this was important. And this is important if you want to be a designer. Now you see, with this logic, if I want a shape like this, I also want, I change the, the contour of top and contour of bottom if I make it like this. Again, this will cause a differential pressure which will work upward.
why there was a need for trying out different different contour because the focus was just not to get lift the focus was i want to have l by d maximum because every lift will give you some drag i'm talking about 2d aerofoil 2d aerofoil you should not get mistaken if this 2d simple 2d aerofoil which is like four series not a laminar type so for every cl there is a cd and this cd is not induced drag because aerofoils are generated assuming infinite span and infinite span doesn't have any induced drag these are because of flow separation that is as this gentleman angle of attack increases at some point flow will separate so this sort of a cd has skin friction component as well as pressure drag because of flow separation these are not vortex induced drag or induced drag the question is at what point i get cl by cd maximum how do i ensure the contour of aerofoil so that cl by cd is maximum this is one aspects that is how you find different type contouring is coming the second point came if at alpha equal to 0 if at alpha equal to 0 you want lift let's say chamber of oil then you have a penalty called cm ac of the wing or aerofoil which will be less than 0 the cm ac i am talking about let's say about c by 4 of the aerofoil the moment will have a reference point right now the point is what is the problem if cms is less than 0 this much you can understand as i am increasing the camber right then lot of force lower portion will generate a force which will give a moment negative at c by 4 which in turn means if there is a force here and force there when i am transferring this force from here to here I have to put a balancing moment, which we call CMAC, and you have been exposed to all this understanding in stability and control. As a designer, I need to know how I am going to handle CMAC minus point zero one and minus point zero nine. You will find as you are increasing camber for. getting more and more cl max the cmac is becoming more and more negative which is naturally true because this part goes on increasing so what is the implication of cmac being large negative see finally what do you want do you want aircraft to be balanced flying like it should be balanced if it has more and more cmac negative which will try to take the aircraft down i need to balance this moment through horizontal tail so if cmac is large generally then the tail size horizontal tail size has to be increased to balance this moment or the arm has to be increased to balance this moment or the both the moment you increase the horizontal size means you are increasing the drag the weight penalty you will see as we progress also that there is a way of doing a trade off by playing around with the ac of the wing but in general if cmac goes on increasing in negative direction the 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 effort additional effort we expect from the horizontal tail hence the size will increase or the momentum is size of the airplane fuselage will increase so which is not all the time encouraged so when you are talking about camber of aerofoil one thing we realize we are looking for cl to be higher we look for cl by cd to be higher we want cmac less than 0 i want to handle it properly i have to keep it in balance is another important thing 
which comes the stall angle. More and more cambering you are doing in your airplane wing or in the aerofoil, the CL max you may get more, but at the cost of alpha stall becoming lesser and lesser. Right? This is a natural trend, so you have to be careful about alpha stall as well. The whole evolution of aerofoil has come up aerodynamically to ensure that after handling all these conditions, we have an aerofoil which optimally satisfies all these four constraints. Right. In that direction, if you see, when I'm talking about this in general, I'm mentally I'm focused for a low speed airplane design, right? But as you know, mankind wants speed. From low subsonic to subsonic, subsonic to supersonic, or transonic, supersonic, hypersonic. So many way the ladder is being challenged. Accordingly, you'll find the wing or the aerofoil shape also will change. We'll have separate session for high speed considerations. I'm at this point talking about low speed so that basic thing you understand and we can go on adding features as we increase the speed regime. When we are talking about aerofoil, if I draw an aerofoil, one was to say the camber line or the camber. Right. And you know, if, if I draw this chord line, then draw perpendicular to the chord, and this distance is the camber. If it was symmetric, the chord and the camber line would have been in same or coincident to say camber is zero. We also note that there is a special significance for the maximum camber, the location of maximum camber. Why that is important? If location of maximum camber is this side, that means we also have noticed that camber line makes an important contribution to the whole leaf distribution. And the location of maximum camber plays an important role. For a particular design, we may like this location of maximum camber to be in front. We want to rise in the CL max. We may like to distribute the location of maximum camber depending upon overall pressure distribution over the wing, which will guarantee aerodynamic efficiency. So we play around with the location of maximum camber. That is why in aerofoil nomenclature you find there is a description where you know maximum camber is located at 0.4 C or something like that. Another important thing what we have noticed is this thickness to chord ratio. This is very, very important. From designers, why should a designer want a T by C ratio higher? General feeling. If somebody says, I want a high T by C ratio. Immediately you know that he is trying to get larger volume and he, want to, he wants to accommodate either the fuel tank or some other sub subsystems inside the wing. But the moment you say T by C ratio is higher, the aerodynamics will say, oh, hold on, hold on. It has some implications. So let us see how T by C plays an important role and what designers should be aware of. You know by now, this is called, we are talking about low speed, nose radius, right? There is a general understanding that T by C will affect CL max, stall, alpha stall, 
weight, drag, etc. But if a designer wants to share some of his feeling, he will say, wing, this is very important, wing with high aspect ratio moderate sweep larger nose radius results in higher tall angle and CL max. Please understand this is a statement for low speed where the catch word is wing. So far we are talking about aerofoil. Now suddenly you have jumped into wing. We have also mentioned word called aspect ratio and sweep. I am presuming that you have exposure to all these terms because you have done those courses just to make you comfortable. The wing means is a, is a wing with different aerofoil or same aerofoil. Right. Aspect ratio, when you say, is a span square by the area of the wing. And sweep also, you know, if this is the aerofoil and flow is like this, if I tag my aerofoil like this, then there is a component which is M cos of sweep angle. This is important that now the normal component is not M or what is Mach number of, it is the M cos of sweep angle, that is the normal component. You know those sweep and we, what we are ta talking about is moderate sweep, maybe 15 degrees, 20 degrees sweep. High aspect ratio means what? more than eight. If that is a com combination of an aircraft for low speed, then invariably you are likely to f assume that if I put a larger nose radius, I'll get higher stall angle and CL max. Right. But the moment I talk about low aspect ratio, Let's say, typical example I'm giving, delta wing. The story is different. These are all I'm sharing feeling of a designer which he will just simply share that you, without much of algorithm, right? But for low aspect ratio, delta wing, you'll find we need sharper leading edge because their lift generation is through vortices generated on delta wing. The vortices generated here, so sharper leading edge is recommended as well as you know that for delta wing stall is very much delayed. If you see the wind tunnel data, you find stalling, almost not stalling time. Yeah. So if you are designing a high aspect ratio, moderate sweep, then you know, larger nose radius plays an important role in terms of stall angle is concerned, seal max is concerned. But the moment you are working for a low aspect ratio, typically it's a delta wing type, you need to look for sharp leading edge and stall is delayed, far, far delayed. This sort of a feel for configuration you need to have 
when you are designing something because when you are doing synthesis, you don't ask too many questions, right? You are an artist that time. So you should select the right type of candidate to stage a real performance. There another important thing, thickness ratio. It has direct implication on structural weight of wing. Typically it is found that the structural weight, the wing that is more important, varies inversely with T by C, thickness to God ratio. If T by C is large, then you expect structural weight of the wing will also be reduced proportionate to this rough relationship. Which in for developing a field, you could see if T by C is half, that means the weight of wing almost reduces by 40% from this relationship. And typically, wing weight, these numbers are important to start a design. Wing weight is typically 15 to 20% of aircraft gross weight or aircraft structure weight not gross, structure weight. So you could see that if there is a reduction in 40% the weight of the wing because of I have reduced T by C. So effectively, overall aircraft weight will get reduced by 5 to 6%. These are, these numbers I am putting so that you also get a feel. If I do this, how much I will get reduction and that is the tool of a good designer, okay? Since we are talking about T by C, another observation you must have that T by C at the root and T by C at the tip, they are different. Structurally, the answer is obvious because maximum bending moment is at the root. So why not you have more of stiffness at the root? And in the tip, the moment reduces, so why do you want so much of area? And typical number I can tell you that T by C at the root could be anywhere between 20% to 40% thicker than Tip. A rough number. Please understand why I am mentioning this. So, any many many researcher or many designer will tell me why 40 percent. It could be 60 percent. So these are typical numbers. As a smart designer, you understand. Oh man, this much is available. Means this much of volume is available with you. You can dump your fuel tank from other accessories in that space of the wing. And also another important thing is, you see, if T by C at the root is higher compared to T by C at the tip, that means if T by C is higher, that means this portion will try to stall earlier than this portion. And my aileron, etc., is here. So root will stall first. The moment root stall first, why root stall first? Because T by C is higher. At root stall first, it will immediately create vibrations at the tail plane, horizontal tail plane. So the pilot will be knowing that we are nearing stall conditions. So these are all secondary effects. The story began because the bending moment at the root is more, so I need more area. Right. The secondary effect, a smart designer, they say, okay, good. I will use that volume for putting 
my are installing my fuel tank to the airplane. The aerodynamic means the flight mechanism I say fine. This will help me in getting a pre-warning for stall. Right? So that is how I always say for a designer, you need not be only bright, you have to be smart also. There will be conflict, but a smart designer uses all this conflict for a natural conclusion, making the airplane more efficient. This T by C, by now, you will agree with me without much of a justification. If I increase T by C, the drag coefficient, the drag will also increase. Obviously, if T by C is more, you are disturbing a larger amount of fluid outside. So your drag also will increase. And if T by C is more, if compared with this, and compared, if I compare with these two things, it is obvious that flow, as far as separation is concerned, will be predominant here compared to this. It will be earlier separation compared to this. So there is a drag changes. And typically you will find that T by C, you can see the charts. Again, you have to see the book. Uh, this is uh, your CD. Let's say 0 0.005. This is something, it goes like this. That is, as you increase T by C, more than 20, the drag penalty is pretty high. So everybody talks about 12 to 14 percent, and that is where you talk about fat aerofoil or thinner aerofoil, right? Please understand, if I require larger T by C, if flow separation is the only issue, I could have handled flow separation by artificially injecting fluid at some point. But when I am talking about a whole design, I am looking into what is the optimal way of handling it. Right? That's why I need to know each element, what are their limits, what happens if something goes beyond a particular number. Because more and more we talk about stall, you cannot avoid talking about stall when you talk about T by C or an aerofoil. If I'm talking about stall, I'm talking about wing. If I have same aerofoil throughout, it's the same aerofoil throughout, and I want that this portion should stall earlier than this portion, I'm assuming even T by C is same, right? then the best way to ensure that happens is you give twist here. Twist this wing. That is, you take the wing, here you give a negative twist. That is, here the aerofoils are like this. So that even if here, the root 12 degrees there, here to 12 minus the twist angle. So again, flow will separate first near the root, then at the tip. Typically, in aeromodelers language, they call it washout, or the olden days used to call washout. This is another way of handling the stall. I thought I must mention. After that, this is another important thing we should revise, since we are graduating from aerofoil to wing, and that is aspect ratio, right? And if we recall our studies, performance course to find that this is aspect ratio, some number I'm giving. This is aspect ratio 6. This is aspect ratio 8. And close by it will be aspect ratio infinity. Few things you should notice as a designer. Don't think these lines are parallel. Okay. 
observe only this point. What I'm trying to suggest. As aspect ratio is increasing in this direction, the stall angle, these are the stall angles, that is decreasing. Right? You know, because the downwash, let's see its wing, downwash it is, I think CL, the wing by pi aspect ratio. So as aspect ratio increases, the downwash at the wing will also decrease. That is, as aspect ratio of the wing increases, epsilon will decrease. What is this epsilon? Please, it's not epsilon at the tail. Please understand this. Remember, there will be upwash and there will be downwash, right? And we also know that the downwash at AC, if this is AC, this is given by CL wing by pi aspect ratio E, and downwash at tail is twice of that, 2CL wing by pi aspect ratio E. Focus on, a, on aspect ratio. What is the message it tells? That if the aspect ratio of the wing is increased, then this contribution will go on decreasing. That means, earlier what was happening, if this is say 15 degree, typically at that angle the wing stalls, because of this downwash, this portion will be seeing 15 minus epsilon. So, it will not stall. It may stall at 17 degree. What we say, if aspect ratio is large, the epsilon will be small, so it will have lesser stalling angle. But if aspect ratio is small, epsilon will be large, so the stall angle will increase. And that is exactly happening. As aspect ratio is increasing, the stall angle is decreasing. Right? You also know that if I have CL alpha 2D for an aerofoil, I know CL alpha 3D, I can easily compute using CL alpha 2D by 1 plus CL alpha 2D by pi aspect ratio E. Designers should get a feel from here. Beyond aspect ratio 8, change in CL alpha is not much. See what is happening? If aspect ratio is large, epsilon is less, that means it is actually seeing large angle of attack because the angle of attack seen by this portion is, let's say, some angle, let us say, this man was coming with alpha. Because of the epsilon, actually this portion is seeing alpha minus epsilon. The force experienced by this wing will be proportional to this angle, not this angle, because there is a downwash here. So if this man is less, then the lift force will be more. This man is less when? When aspect ratio is large. So indirectly what I am getting a relationship, as aspect ratio increases, CL alpha also will increase, which is seen here. If aspect ratio reduces, when aspect ratio becomes infinity, this gentleman becomes zero. So CL alpha 3D becomes CL alpha 2D. And CL alpha 2D is the maximum value you can have. So as aspect ratio is increasing, slope will actually increase. But beyond aspect ratio 8, there is hardly any change in the CL alpha of the wing. So as a designer, what do I say? I say, come on. So initially, I take 5.5 per radian or 5 to 5.5 per radian as CL alpha 3D of the wing. I start making some approximate calculations. But when I write this, I am clear that aspect ratio is more than 8 or around 8. These are all designers feel, okay? This is another designer's perspective with aspect ratio. You know aspect ratio is 
b squared by s wing. You might have decided wing area based on other considerations. That is, for a designer, for a fixed SW, B is directly proportional to square root of aspect ratio. This is another very, very important relationship which helps a designer to get his initial feel for numbers. Also, one would like to know how L by D gets affected via aspect ratio. Why it is important? If there is aspect ratio, if I increase aspect ratio, the induced drag part will go on reducing. As induced drag goes on reducing, the drag part will also go on re reducing. And because of downwards, there is an effect on the CL alpha we have seen. So how do I perceive L by D via aspect ratio? That is also an important designer's feel you need to have. Let us see that. You know, we talk about L by D max. That is what a designer look for. L by D max means CL is CD naught by K. And you also know K is 1 by pi. Aspect ratio is, and these are all on your fingertips. And CD equal to CD naught plus KCL square. Since CL equal to CD naught by K for L by D max, so CD becomes 2 CD naught. So what is CL by CD? CL by CD will be CL divided by CD, which is 2 CD naught, which is CL nothing but under root CD naught by K by 2 CD naught. And K is 1 by pi aspect ratio E. So if I further do this, I get this is CD naught by pi aspect ratio by k, right? So k is 1 by 1 by pi aspect ratio e divided by 2 cd naught, cd naught. So this sort of a relationship comes, and from here you find cl by cd will vary with square root of aspect ratio. Do you see here? CD naught by K, K is 1 by pi aspect ratio E. So CD naught by 1 by pi aspect ratio E. So the pi aspect ratio E will come on the numerator. And CD naught is here. Uh, this is under root, of course. This is this under root. OK? Don't. You are smart. You can do this. Please understand what I'm trying to tell you is CL by CD will be directly proportional to the aspect ratio because this gentleman will come in the numerator because that is 1 by pi aspect ratio E. So the message for a designer is CL by CD will vary with square root of aspect ratio. So if I am increasing the aspect ratio, I know at what rate I can expect CL by CD will increase. This is also another very important understanding for a designer. As I told you earlier also, Whatever we have studied in performance course or stability and control course, I'll try to present, synthesize those things from designer's perspective. That is why I give this number and we are interpreting in a little different way.